guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be tying another fly. Today's fly is gonna be an olive quill. It's sort of like a little betas imitation. And I tie a few little variations of this olive quill. And this fly has done really good for me on creeks like Penn's Creek. I've caught like tons of trout in like one day with this one fly. So I don't wanna to spend too much time talking here. You know the deal, subscribe, like the video, leave a comment at the end. And I'm gonna go ahead and just get straight into showing you guys the materials and then we'll go ahead and tie it. All right, so to start this fly off, uh, for thread, we're gonna be using a gray ADOT thread. This is super fly, but any brand will do. The body of this fly is made from hand-stripped quills and olive. The tail fibers are Coq de Leon in light, but you can also use dark because to be honest, there's not much variation in the colors. For the collar in this video, I'm using Ice Dub UV Gray, but I also like to tie this fly with the Black Peacock Ice Dub. The hook is an Orient Sun 5241 and size 18. And lastly, the bead is a 2.3 millimeter black nickel tungsten bead slotted. But when I tie this fly with the black peacock ice tub, I like to use a silver bead. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into tying this fly. All right, so to start this fly, we're gonna go ahead and put our hook in the vise here upside down. And then just grab your bead and go ahead and slip that on. This just makes it a little bit easier for smaller beads like that, just to get them on the hook. And then you can go ahead and rotate it over and just secure the hook in the vise here. Once you have the hook secured in the vise, you can go ahead and get your thread ready on your bobbin if you haven't already. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start our thread behind the bead here and just work back a little bit and then you can come in and cut that tag off with your scissors. Once that's cut off, you can go ahead and just work the rest of the thread back to the bend in the hook. Now we're gonna grab our Coq de Leon, and for my tails, I like to pluck off about five fibers or so. It's all really preference, to be honest, though. Once you have your fibers, you can come in here and just do a pinch wrap to get them secured on the hook. And I just take a few wraps and then come in with my fingers and just pull them to the preferred length. And once I have them where I want them, I go ahead and work my thread up to the bead again. I like to make sure my bead's sitting right there before I go fully to the top. And then once you go up to the top, you can come in with your tying scissors and just cut off the rest of that Coq de Leon. Then you're gonna wanna work your thread back to the back there again, but just stay a little bit short just so we can tie in this next part. And you're gonna go ahead and grab your olive quill. And then you just kinda set it up against the hook shank there and just take a few loose wraps to get it in place. Don't take your tying thread all the way to the back of the fly though, just to leave room for that first wrap of the quill. And then you can move your thread all the way to the top and just kind of cover up any of those extra little pieces of fibers that are sticking out there and then cut the rest of it off. Once you have that cut off, you're gonna start wrapping the quill. I'm doing this without a rotary vise, so this is kind of how you're gonna do it if you're not using a rotary vise. You just start wrapping it and as you take each turn around the hook shank, just hold the rest with your finger just because you don't want that to come undone. And as you're doing this, make sure you're making touching wraps with the quill. And you're just gonna take that all the way up so that it's touching the bead. Once you have the quill up to the bead, you can go ahead and just make sure it's situated there and grab your tying thread just to give it a quick tie off. And then you can come in and snip the excess off. At this point, you're gonna grab your whip finishing tool and just do like a three or four turn whip finish. We're not done with the fly at this point. This is just so we can put the first UV coat on the fly. And then just go ahead and snip that thread off. So now we're gonna go ahead and UV coat this fly. Uh, you definitely wanna take your time with this just because you don't wanna have too much on the fly and you don't wanna have too little. And you wanna make sure that you cover the entire quill because you know, the quill is very, 
very fragile and as you're fishing this fly it will fall apart if you don't have uv cure on the parts uh, of the quill so on all parts of the quill so definitely want to make sure that it's covered and i mean you can fish this fly basically until you lose it or the hook becomes dull and then once you have everything where you like it you can just come in with your uv light and give that a nice 20 second cure I like to move my light around the fly too, just to get those undersides since we're covering the entire fly. Now that we have the body UV cured, you can go ahead and just start your tying thread behind the bead there again with just a few wraps. And you don't wanna pull them too tight either because now that we have that UV on there, if you pull them too tight, it will cause the UV to bulge off the fly. And for the last part of the fly, we're gonna go ahead and grab a small amount of dubbing and then just go ahead and create yourself a small little dubbing noodle on your thread. And then just go ahead and wrap that on the fly. And then as soon as I get that dubbing on there, I don't like to create any extra bulk. So just come in with your whip finishing tool and give it a nice three, four turn whip finish and pull that thread tight. And again, you don't want to pull it too tight and then just snip off that excess. This part's optional, but I like to put a little bit of UV cure on all of my flies thread wraps just to give it a little bit of extra durability. And then obviously if you're going to put that on, go ahead and UV cure that. And once you finish UV curing that, the fly is complete. But that's going to be it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this tying video. Uh, like I said, this is a great little pattern. I've used this on pens and a few other creeks and then have had great success with this fly and it's really been like a, a day saver, so, so to speak. Uh, but don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this in the future. Go ahead and smash the like button and leave a comment. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. And until next time, peace.